All right, so we get the gist of this. All right. Let's see if I can get back to my PowerPoint. <laughs> so who knows how to get out of this? There we go. Alright, well, if I exit. Oh, uh, you know, any Mac people here? Yes. How do I get to my other if I go down to PowerPoint, if I so, double click, tap Maybe on. at the top, at the top left, is there a green? This, X, X. Go away. Or right, right click. Ah, right. hello. I just need to get back to my PowerPoint, then I'm done. I'm done with this. Thank you. Is that it? Or is it? Yes. Yeah, Thank you. Right there. Yeah, I did that. Ah, okay, so how do we get it to play there? I think you just got to slideshow. I hate taking 10 minutes, play too short. There we go. And then just page down. There you go. Okay, and so then I need to yeah, stand I think over it's here. Yeah, spacebar is the next thing. Spacebar. Yeah. Like this. Okay, so thank you. All right. So you can see that car stereo at full volume it pulls up next to you at the red light. And the issue there is that you are inside the car with the sound. Sound is a pressure wave. And the more enclosed you are, the louder the sound is. So cranking it up inside your car is going to be as harmful as a gunshot or a fireworks show or um, any of those sounds. MP3 players, if you're wearing earbuds, the sound has a better opportunity for leaking out, and the external sounds, let's say you're at the gym and you can hear the TVs that are mounted and people's conversations, you have a tendency to crank up the music so that you can hear it over the external sounds. And so we find that people are really cranking it up and harming their hearing that way. So MP3 players can be as damaging as a live concert standing by the speakers. So that's... Um, noise that's related to your lives outside of your study. We're all exposed to noise. And hello, there we go. So poor painful guy there. Um, and I'm going to talk about all different types of noise. And hearing loss is not just for old folks. I am seeing younger and younger people coming in with noise-induced hearing loss. And it's because they are in a band they mow the lawn, they walk past construction sites. Uh, it's a very noisy world, and it's a cumulative effect. The more noise you're exposed to, and I'm going to say noise even when I'm talking about music, and I don't mean it that way. I'm just talking about loud sounds that are potentially harmful, so it's not a value judgment at all. Um, so we really do have to protect our hearing, and audiologists, as much as people like to say, oh, you just want to sell me hearing aids, I would really rather prevent hearing loss from happening than to diagnose it after it's happened. So prevention is really important to us. And since noise-induced hearing loss is a cumulative thing, um, I'm going to talk to you about protecting your hearing while you're playing, but also while you're listening recre recreationally and other sources of noise that you might be exposed to to try and protect your hearing. Because if you can protect your hearing a little bit, during the day from other noise sounds, you can tolerate a little bit more um, music, loud music, when you want it to be loud. And I'm not averse to turning it up myself, so I understand. So the way this works, and I don't have a pointer, but basically the sound goes in your ear, and your ear's like a funnel. And so it concentrates the sound, and it tunnels down into your ear hits your eardrum, your eardrum vibrates. So that's a physical movement of the sound. And it concentrates down to that little bone there that's literally pounding on your inner ear. Okay, Your inner ear is filled with fluid. And when that sound pressure hits the inner ear, it starts the wave going, literally the wave. And in your inner ear, the high frequency sounds the fibers that go to the nerve, that go to your brain, are on the outside. The low frequency sounds are protected for some reason, poor planning, I think, but 
they're on the inside, okay? So the high frequencies are more vulnerable to the effects of noise-induced hearing loss or you know, noise damage. And there's a lot of really vital information in the high frequency. Speech information, musical sound that you want to hear. Um, so unfortunately, that's where you're going to notice hearing loss first. And there's these tiny little hair cells, fibers in your inner ear. And if you think about a lawn, okay, you've got this beautiful green lawn, and you're walking to your driveway, and of course, you cut across the lawn because that's the quickest way to get there, right? So if you walk across the lawn, you flatten the grass, and the grass bounces back up, back up, right? But if you did that every day and you walk that same path every day, eventually the grass is going to stop popping back up, and you're going to wear a dirt path to your driveway, okay? So your inner ear is exactly the same way. You've got those fibers, and if you pound them, they'll bounce back. But if they get crunched, you're going to have some damage to your inner ear. And it may be in the form of hearing loss, but it could also be in the form of tinnitus or any other number of other distortions to hearing, and I'm going to talk about those. But basically, once you've pulverized those hair cells, they don't come back. We're working on it, but we haven't figured out how to bring them back yet. Okay. So I'm going to talk a lot about noise doses, because you think of it like a daily dose. How much noise are you exposed to in the course of a day, okay? So, um, you know, there's quiet sounds, rustle leaves and things, background noise, loud noise, and then you can see there's literally a pain index that goes along with sounds. Um, and I read an article the other day about there, there are volcanoes in the South Pacific that are erupting and they all get compared to Krakatoa, which was like the biggest one ever. And literally, you, it's like you, someone made a sound in Ireland and you heard it in New York. That's how loud it was. And it burst people's eardrums. It just literally was so loud that it was painful and horrible. So if you look at, and I don't want to, am I standing? Um, you've got, the, the sounds that the instruments themselves make, okay, and there are some instruments that make soft sounds and some make loud sounds, and they're on that scale, and you figure, okay, you know, I played the piano. Oddly enough, you can't play the piano that loud. It, it's actually not on the scale of loudness that big a deal. But you would be surprised that flutes and piccolos are not only loud but sharp and high frequency and will... Uh, target the area of your ear that's already vulnerable to sound. So they're kind of higher on the scale of potential for damage, okay? So you've got kind of the range of loudness um, potential for harm, okay? And then you figure, well, okay, I, I play the double bass. I'm, you know, don't, don't have a lot of noise there. But you've got the trombones behind your head. Okay, if you're in the orchestra, they're right behind you and you're getting a great big noise dose. And the same is true for the clarinets. You've got the percussion right behind you. Okay, so up until fairly recently, nobody was really thinking about the effects on the players of being in the orchestra. And I've had any number of people come to the hearing problem and saying, oh, I play the French horn and now I don't hear it as well and I can't monitor myself and, um, you know, so it's, it's uh, distressing for them. So here's, and I can make this available to send out so that you can all look at the numbers and figure out where your instrument fits, but there's kind of the average level and then there's peak levels, okay? So there's going to be certain peak sounds depending on the piece you're playing you're going to have more or less dose, and you have to think about rehearsals and all that, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. But you notice down here, there's those iPods, okay? Got your MP3 player turned up so that you can hear it over the other people in the gym. You potentially got 130 decibels hitting your ear, um, and you know, an hour here, then you get on the bus, listen to it on the bus, then you get home, and you're you know, listening to music at home or you're uh, mowing the lawn or working with power tools or whatever you do for uh, recreation, you know, ATVs, lots of noisy um, 
devices out there. And so hearing issues are kind of insidious, you know, because we all have difficulty understanding people at times. Okay, if you go to a restaurant, a cheesecake factory, or some really big, open, clangy plates and things, you have difficulty understanding the people that you're talking to across the table. Everybody does, okay? So it's very easy to fool yourself into thinking that it's situational, okay? Um, and you don't notice how often you're asking people to repeat themselves or how often you're having difficulty understanding people when they're talking to you, okay? Until usually you start to have other symptoms of hearing problems. So the first things you'll notice again is background noise. Um, you do okay in a quiet room, you have a lot more difficulty in a noisy space. Or you catch half the sentence, somebody says, I'm gonna go make the bed. And you're thinking, did they say, I'm gonna make the bed, I'm gonna make the bread. And you're watching to see if they go to the kitchen or the bedroom. You know, you're, you're trying to figure out from context. It's like playing Wheel of Fortune. You need the clues to fill in the blanks. Okay, so it's like, I said fish, but I'm holding a dish. I'm making a fish dish. I don't know, what, what did I say, you know? So if somebody changes the subject, you know how you're following a conversation and all of a sudden you go, what's he talking about, you know? someone changed the subject, you're playing catch up because you missed it, okay? Everybody does that, okay? But if you're missing those high frequency sounds, they're soft, you can't shout an S, okay? Ah, oh, vowels travel, high frequencies don't. So they're soft, and if you're hearing them even softer than you should be, they disappear, okay? They get overpowered by the vowels. So if I hear sit, fit, I might have to look at my lips. Some people aren't good lip readers. Some people are. I can watch television and tell what the umpire and the doll player are talking about. Most people can. Then you get tinnitus, ringing in the ears. It's not always ringing. Sometimes it's buzzing. Sometimes it's, it's like a white noise kind of sound, okay, or I can't even do it, high pitch, sometimes it does it, it's something, and then it goes away. Everybody's had that experience where you hear that high pitch sound, and then it goes away. And that's one of those little hair cells going, help me, <laughs> dead, okay. And I've had, um, I used to work, I had a summer job at the airport with the airplane mechanics. And my job was to make measurements of loud sounds, airplanes and stuff. And the mechanics didn't think they had any hearing problems, but it was really noisy airplanes and hangars and all this stuff. I said, okay, you're driving to work, put the radio on, on the news station or something, in a comfortable level, listen to the news, you can understand what the guy's saying, okay? When you get to work, turn the car off. Don't turn the radio off, just turn the car off. Go to work for a day. And then get back in the car and turn it on and see if you can still understand what the guy is saying. And then the next time I saw them, they said, you know, I would have turned the radio up because their ears were kind of roaring at the end of the day, okay? So you go to a concert and you sit by the speakers, great evening, and you leave and your head's going, Wah, right? Okay, by the next morning, it's gone. Think about if it didn't go away. Okay, when your head is roaring like that, and it just would keep doing that and not stop. Okay, so it, it can be very disabling. Um, so you don't want that. Whoops, hello. Oh, okay, so um, this is just a picture of if you already, who's had a hearing test before? Okay, oh, good. Hey, kindergarten, was that the last time? <laughs> no? Yeah, okay, I mean, it's kind of what people tell me. Um, so if you think about this, this is like a, a snapshot, okay? The pitch is across low to high like a piano, okay? And then loudness, it's kind of upside down. So the marks are how loud I have to make the sounds before you hear them, okay? If I don't have to make them very loud, you get X's and O's across the board, you hear normally, okay? And what that means is all of that speech information is above your threshold, 
you're hearing all those sounds. I really wish I had a pointer. All of that. That's normal hearing. Okay. So. High frequency hearing loss means you hear the low pitch sounds, but you don't hear the high pitch sounds as well. I had to make them louder before you heard it, push the button, raised your hand, okay? So that's a noise notch, okay? So any of those sounds that are in that purple area are sounds that aren't loud enough for you to hear. So you're hearing mm, mm, ah, like you don't hear shh, you might hear softly, not hearing the sounds that help you tell words apart. Okay, and if you were listening to music, I'm sure it wouldn't sound like you'd want to be adjusting the bass and pushing up the treble, okay, because it won't sound right to you. And then, if you have even more hearing loss, you're missing that much more speech information and birds chirping and leaves rustling and soft sounds in the environment. And I've had people, after they get hearing aids, they say, I heard the birds singing outside my window. You know, it had been 15 years since they heard it, so. And that's a really significant kind of, I hear all the lows, I don't hear the highs. Okay, so there's a lot of information there that you're missing. And plurals and possessives and all of that, um, not just telling words apart, but some actual parts of language that can get you kind of mixed up if you don't hear them. So if you were to Google musician hearing loss, you're gonna get a lot of articles. It's becoming more and more, um, uh, the, the guys that, that invented rock and roll are now dealing with their deafness, and significant deafness in some cases. Um, and classical musicians, and it's not just rock and roll, I mean classical musicians have as much of an opportunity to lose their hearing without hearing protection. And I think the tinnitus is the first sign usually Sensitivity to loud sounds is another early sign where you'll notice that somebody will play a sharp sound and ugh, it's really, you know, put your teeth on edge. And so the temptation is to wear earplugs a lot um, in a protective sort of way, like an anticipatory sort of way. Like I'm just gonna walk around with earplugs all the time because I hate um, not knowing when there's gonna be a sound that's gonna hurt my ears. Okay, so then you're isolating yourself from your life and that's not good either. So you, again, you wanna prevent it before it happens. Pitch perception issues. Now this is kind of a weird thing um, to describe and I couldn't find any good um, demonstrations, you know, to kind of, because they're binaural. Like you'll hear a pitch differently in one ear than you hear it in the other ear which for ordinary, ordinary people, non-musicians, they might notice it, but that might be a subtle thing that they wouldn't catch, but you guys would notice it, okay? And they're all different ways that it might happen. You might hear a pitch normally in one ear and distorted in the other ear, or you might hear two distinct pitches but not the accurate pitch, okay? Um, or you'll hear an echo, which can be bothersome um, if you're trying to work. And if you, um, like for example, violinists, their left ear is resting on the violin and they tend to have asymmetrical, when they get hearing loss, if they get hearing loss, it's asymmetrical. And so they'll have these weird perceptions differently one ear to the other, okay? So those are all kinds of things that you might notice before you have a hearing problem as it's developing, like warning, warning signs. And then there are people who have hearing problems already from totally other unrelated reasons. Um, one of the guys from KISS, Stanley, I think, was born with a hearing loss. Not a terrible one, but enough that he wore hearing protection always because he knows that he doesn't want to get any more hearing loss than he has. Um, so there's all sorts of head injury and, you know, you can get a concussion, you can lose some of your hearing. So. Um, all of these things, it's an additive. Anything you've got, all these things add up. You get an ear infection, your ears get clogged up, you don't hear anything. And then, like I said, noise exposure in the world. The world is a noisy place, so you definitely wanna protect yourself. Okay, so any place where you have to shout over the background noise is a potentially noisy situation. Now, do you wanna go to a nightclub and put earplugs in? You know, I mean, 
it's the kind of thing where you can manipulate your environment a little bit maybe. Like you go to a club, don't stand by the speakers, okay? Or limit how much you're in the noise. Take a break from the noise. That makes a big difference. Sometimes you can just step outside and have a conversation outside and let your ears rest a little bit and then go back inside. And that actually, you know, bit by bit, that's saving your ears where you can. Um, if you leave a place and your ears are ringing or your hearing sounds muffled, that's an indication that that was a noisy environment that is potentially harmful. And so, do you want to go there every night? I know bartenders that have some serious issues because they're there all the time. Okay. Um, headphones, like I said, um, earbuds don't keep the sound, don't let the sound go where you want it to go and they don't keep outside sounds out. So noise canceling headphones or even just over the ear headphones versus earbuds, and yeah, I'm not saying don't wear earbuds, but um, if you're going to be somewhere, I was like on the bus or someplace where you can do that. I mean, I know it's hard to work out with the cans on, you know, I mean, I'm a realist. I know that having hearing protection or headphones that you don't wear does you no good. Okay, so you know yourselves. You know, I'm just I'm telling you what the risks are. Choose something that you're going to wear, that you're actually going to use, and use them when it makes sense to use them. Okay, earbuds are much easier if you're going to be someplace really loud. If you have over-the-ear headphones, that would be a better choice. Um, and parents always tell their kids, these are your headphones, don't get earbuds yet. And it's frustrating. And if you've ever been in a situation where you were having real dif difficulty understanding someone, talking to someone who doesn't speak English as a first language and you're trying to imagine just having that all the time where you're having to kind of figure out what's going on. And so there you are in the restaurant and then you have that poor guy who he's just tuned out because it's too hard, okay? It makes your brain work harder, and it's, it's physically exhausting. And they've done studies with kids with hearing loss in school, and by the end of the day, they go home and they sleep for an hour because they're so exhausted. Listening's hard work. Okay, so orchestral musicians are at much higher risk than you might think. And like I said, violinists tend to have asymmetrical issues, probably other, um, depending on where you are in the orchestra and what instrument is on one side of you or the other, you could be exposed more on one side than on the other. Um, percussionists obviously are making a lot more noise, but don't have to necessarily uh, rehearse with the drums all the time. Sometimes you have to, I know, but um, there are ways that you can do it. Um, there are two really good guides, like I said, I'm gonna get this information out to you. They were developed in London because someone who plays for the Royal Orchestra of some sort um, sued because he got a hearing loss and he says, the orchestra managers didn't protect me from myself, okay? Um, so they've developed really, really good guidelines, okay? So, and the management have to get involved and plan how they schedule what pieces are performed in a season and, um, you know, a loud one, a soft one, a loud one, you know, I mean, they, they kind of think about these things, okay? So there's two, this part is for managers, one part is for musicians, and basically it's causing people to think about how music is presented for the audience's sake and for the player's sake, okay? Putting risers in so that you've got the trumpets over the heads of the people playing in front of them, okay? Or making enough distance between one player and another so that the sound is a little bit softer by the time it gets to the head of the person in front of them, okay? Um, putting in sound baffling, putting in baffles. And you've seen people that have things on stands that are protecting them from percussion or whatever. Um, you know, what, how you rehearse, what room you rehearse in, you know, uh, you, and, and I'll, I'm, I'm jumping the gun, okay? Taking breaks, even short breaks, really makes a difference that you rest your ears, you really are resting your ears, okay? So, 
Um, it all adds up. Every little bit of protection that you can give or um, respite from noise exposure is protecting your hearing. Um, and you know, sound does sort of travel in a straight line, not that you don't get some spillover, but the, the force of the sound really is in a straight line. So if you, you know, kind of stagger the instrument so that the person's not playing right behind your head, just a little bit over, um, just giving it some thought really makes a difference. Yeah, quiet and loud pieces and what parts of a piece you rehearse at what time, okay? It's like they're, they've given some thought to, you know, we've been playing for a while, are we gonna necessarily rehearse the really noisiest part of this, you know, movement right now, you know, we'll take a break and we'll come back and rehearse that later or something. So, um, now, I don't know if you can tell that I'm not, I don't play an instrument myself. I listen to music. I think I kind of understand how things go, but you know, you're thinking she not what she's talking about. Um, reverberation is a big deal too. I mean, most concert halls are treated so that there's an appropriate amount of reverberation, but not like in a gymnasium, okay? Because when the sound bounces off the wall and it comes back, that's adding to the noise factor and the potential damage factor. So sound treated um, halls are really important. And if you've got a huge orchestral piece and you've got a great big stage and you've got really low ceilings, again, you're kind of compressing the sound into a small space. Um, so I think they're starting to give thought to those kinds of things. Um, and not scheduling a morning rehearsal after a really loud, uh, loud concert the night before. Whoops, oh, I gotta go back. How do I get back? I skipped one. Um, okay, well, anyway, earplugs. Nobody wants to wear earplugs, I know that. There are different kinds of earplugs. Everybody's ears are different from each other and from each other. Okay, so you may have an earplug that fits your right ear really well and you're just not comfortable in your left ear, okay? Um, the non-custom earplugs are inexpensive, but they're not always comfortable. The custom earplugs are more expensive, but you might get used to them and not feel them as much. Um, I will let you all decide how you feel about the way things sound, because it depends on you, your personality, your instrument, uh, what kind of music you play. Um, some people get used to them and then they really love them and they think they do better. Other people use them because they know they don't want hearing loss down the line, but they never really like them. Um, some people only wear them for performances and not for rehearsing. Again, wearing them is better than not wearing them. Try to find something you'll wear as much as you should. Um, and that's all I can say. I mean, I'm not going to lecture you and say, you must wear them all the time. You should, but sometimes you just want it loud. So again, there's, I'll get you this. There's a whole list of, you know, if you play this instrument, what kind of earplug would be best for you? Because the earplugs have filters in them that filter out a certain amount of loudness as well as frequency. So. It makes a difference and you want to pick well. And then there are adaptive earplugs for certain kinds of situations. Um, and you can read all about those and decide whether that's something you really need, but those are expensive. So the earplugs themselves have got the filters and the colors are just because they're cute. That doesn't mean anything. I mean, you just basically, that they're just different strengths of filters and you can color code them, you can get them made in clear, you can get them made in colors, school colors, whatever. The non-custom ones, there are kind of two kinds of non-custom ones. There are the really non-custom ones that look like a Christmas tree and basically you jam it in there until you get to resistance, okay? If you have little bitty ears, it won't go in as far. If you have great big ears, it'll go in farther until you get to the biggest flange. If you have really huge ears, they may always be too small. The, the non-custom ones are built for average people. So if you have really big ears, you probably won't ever get as snug a fit as you should get. 
the, for a little bit more money, you can get the same filter with foam plugs that expand and fill the space, but they're disposable and you have to replace the foam plugs. So there's kind of an ongoing expense unless you want them to get really grody, which you probably don't want. Then there are the kind that are semi-custom. And what those are are um, lumps of some plastic kind of material. You soak them in really hot water till they get soft and then you let them cool a little bit so you don't burn yourself. And you jam it in your ear and let it firm up again. And then you have kind of the shape of your ear. It's never great, but it's more custom than the Christmas tree style. And they're that much more expensive, okay, for a pair. Um, so, you know, there are relatively inexpensive choices out there, but the custom ones that are made for your ears are always gonna be the most comfortable and the least bothersome, but they're several hundred dollars a pair. So, um, you know, you have to decide. And then, um, I know for certain kinds of music, you can wear in-ear monitors. I don't think classical musicians can use these very well. I think it's mostly for bands, uh, rock bands and that kind of thing. But um, rather than having monitor speakers, you can use monitors in the ear and control the sound that way. And then there's hearing protection that you would use to go to the Siegel Center and listen to a basketball and watch, watch a basketball game without having to listen to, it's incredibly loud, um, those spongy ear tips that you get in the drugstore, okay? The trick with these, and everybody has seen someone with the things sticking out, like if I look at you and I can see yellow, they are not in right, okay? They've gotta be down in your ear, but you can't just take it and jam it in your ear, okay? You have to roll it like a sausage, and then quick, get it in there, and stuff it down in there, and then it's gonna expand. And then, and you'll be in blissful silence, and no one will see them. And then you have to kind of try and jam, get them out with your fingernails. Um, but they're disposable, you can get them in the drugstore cheap. And then there's hearing protection if you work on your car, for example, you know, turn the engine on while your head's under there, probably not, but um, some people wear both, the earplugs and the muffs to really protect their hearing when listening to the sound isn't really necessary, okay? So again, you should use them. You wanna protect your hearing. You'd be very, very sad if you developed a hearing loss in your 30s. I hope you all expect that you're gonna be playing for the rest of your lives, whether it's professionally or for your own enjoyment. You don't want hearing loss, it's not fun, okay? So yes, you should use hearing protection. And you should be honest with yourself and try different things. Use as much as you need, but not more. Like there are filters, you know, and you have to play with them because if you jam your ears up and you put, use the biggest filter and everything, you're gonna be unhappy and you're not gonna wanna wear them, okay? So get whichever ones you can get that will be least obtrusive and least bothersome and you won't resent wearing them and you'll wear them more often and you can carry them with you and when you get someplace and you say, wow, it's really loud here, put your earplugs in and you know, try not to, uh, and don't use them once in a while because you'll never get used to them. You know, I mean, it, it, it's really something that, you know, it's not natural to jam things in your ears. You, and I think now that we wear earbuds a lot more often, I think we're used to having things sitting here, but having something snugly in your ear takes getting used to. So you really, you want them to be as comfortable as you can. And like I said, it's loud there. So um, bring your earplugs to the Seagull Center. So ask me questions. Now, how quickly did I do that? I was trying to come through. Oh, we got time. So we got lots of time. I'd zip through it. Go ahead. What the noise canceling headphones are gonna do is to keep the outside sounds out so that you can get the same sensation that you're looking for with a softer, lower decibel level. So that, oh, absolutely better for you. Um, it's a little disconcerting, you know, depending on where you are, you feel a little isolated, you know, um, but you get used to that. And then 
anything that covers your ears, even if they're not noise canceling, and keeps the outside sounds out, you don't need as much volume to get the same visceral experience. I saw another hand somewhere. Yes, um, you can have, it's, it's usually not outright hearing loss, but muffling of the sound, like when the barometer's going funky or if you've got allergies or anything and your ears are popping. Um, it, if you have fluid or even just um, air pressure changes in your ears, you get that muffling of that <laughs> Charlie Brown's teacher kind of womp womp. Um, that comes and goes, which is also annoying. You know, so consistency is kind of the thing. If, you, if, you're, if you're sleeping with someone who snores and you wear ears all night, is that a bad thing to do? Um, ear circulation I think it depends on your personal ear uh, environment. Some people are more prone to um, uh, external ear infections, you know. The, the first thing that I'll say, and everybody's heard this, is you don't clean the wax out of your ears. Don't use Q-tips in your ears. Um, and the reason you have wax in your ears is to keep the bugs out. And I know this because I've seen the bugs that crawl in there when you don't have wax in your ears, like literally looked in and seen antennas looking back at me. Not cool. Um, don't, oh, I, you know those Dr. Pimple Popper shows that are on? Okay, so they have the uh, videos of people like pulling things out of people's ears. Bad, really bad, yes. So, um, do you have a story to tell? Or are you just saying, yes, I have seen that? It's really horrible, yeah. Uh, things like disintegrating in there, it's really bad. Um, uh, Well, the lower frequency sounds usually have more volume, okay? And so it's just more bang, and it causes that wave to go through the whole inner ear. So it, it hits the whole range of things. So the high frequencies are um, selective. So when you saw that hearing loss where it was just a notch, that meant that there was some select high frequency sound that was just bum, 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 bum. Low frequencies, you can't do a whole lot about bass except to turn down the bass. You know, I mean, I, I know, you know, in the car, boy, it's just, you know. Earplugs are not, it, it's, gonna, it's gonna prevent the overall loudness. It's not gonna prevent the sound that you hear through bone conduction. But that's not gonna be as loud as what's coming in your ear, and you just mitigate it. I mean, you just move this, it'll, it'll get to you, but not as loud. You had a question. Um, so what happens if you have sensitive You can um, get it taken out once, get your ear checked, make sure you don't have a hole in your eardrum, like people that have chronic ear infections and have actually had a perforated eardrum don't want to be putting eardrops in their ears. Okay, so like go one time, get the doctor, take it out, and look in your ears, you're all good. And then you kind of get on a regimen of, you know, once a month I've got, they have kits in the drugstore, like where the eye drops are, they have eardrops. It's a little syringe and drops, and usually the drops are um, something foamy and something oily. So it'll be peroxide and mineral oil or something like that. And you drop them in, it foams, you get your syringe, <laughs> wash it out once a month, and you should be good. Now, if you're wearing earplugs all the time, you're gonna stimulate wax production because wax production is a way of keeping foreign bodies out of your ear, and if you're putting foreign bodies in your ear, you're, it's gonna happen. So if you're prone to that, you're just gonna have to re have a regimen that works and maybe do it twice a month or something like that. Um, but if you're seeing the wax, it's designed to fall out on its own. And so if you're wiping it away, Generally, I've had people say, oh, I've got terrible earwax, and I look in there, and it's not blocked. It's just there, because that's what's supposed to happen. It's supposed to fall out on its own. And there's nothing yucky about it. It's just, you know, it just happens. Yes. So I know a lot of musicians will shy away from wearing earplugs while they're performing, because it kind of changes pitch perception. Right. Do the more custom options... Um, well, they have the different filters, and then you kind of can experiment with the because they'll come with several filters, and then you can experiment with them and see 
The tra it's a trade-off. It's always going to be a trade-off. Okay. So you have to know, okay, when I'm playing a certain way, this is what it's supposed to sound like, and you try to, you know, and then put the filter in and think, because you're trying, it depends on who you're playing for. You want to know what they're hearing is different than how it's sounding to you. Okay, so you can kind of get a sense of, okay, if I'm playing it just right, it's going to sound this way to me, but it's going to sound the way I want it to sound for the audience. Okay. As opposed to, I'm not getting as much pleasure from it, but when I am home and I can, I can play it the way I want to hear it myself. Yeah. You know, so. Okay. Anything else? I know a little bit about music. Anything else? Anybody wants their hearing tested? I'm trying to figure out a way to get you guys, like, I don't know if student health covers that. I have to figure it out, but oh, yes. Want you want your hearing test, yeah, <laughs> me, me. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, if you've got commercial health insurance, then it's covered. If you've got only student health, I don't know if it's covered because the person who used to work there isn't there anymore, so I couldn't find out, um, but I'll find out. And um, like I said, I looked up the actual prices on Amazon for those earplugs. And so the little Christmas tree plugs are literally $12 a pair, which is cheaper than the manufacturer sells it for on their own site, which is, of course, Amazon taking over the world. Um, so you decide. They have a filter. The ones that say 20, those are, that's a 20 dB filter. So that's, it's just one, one size fits all if you want Different filters, you get the custom ones with the different filters. And 20 dB might be more than you want. They have 15, 20, and then, like, if you're playing metal, you can get really big, big filters. Anything else? No? Wakey, wakey. <laughs> All right, that's good. Thank you. Off you go. <laughs> but yeah, oops. It was off.